Wednesday Night Reviews. Thank you for tuning in, everyone. I'm your host, Conrad, from Wednesday Night Reviews. And from superheroes to average Joes, here's what I read this week. The amazing team of Brian Azzarello and Lee Bromejo have come out with Batman Damned, parts one, two, and three. The third part just released uh, within the last month or so, uh, and I finally got to read all three of them consecutively. Now, this all-star team has come together previously to create the books Luthor and Joker uh, from 2008 and 2010, and just like with these books, the art in them is fabulous. Of course, those being 10 years ago, the level of detailing in the drawing as well as the complexity of the writing has gotten even better. Uh, and that is truly why I recommend if you haven't yet picked up Batman Damned, please do so. You are going to be able to get it as a uh, trade or hardcover come September 10th. So look out for it. Contact your local stores now because you're going to want this. So Batman Damned is, as I've titled it, a nightmare in three parts. This comic starts where so many stories in Gotham end. The back of an ambulance. We first see Batman at the very front pages of this comic, bleeding out in the back of an ambulance from what looks to be multiple stab wounds or gunshot wounds. We're never truly sure. All we know is the Dark Knight is bleeding out. He is grimacing. And, of course, he's in an ambulance. He's never been in an ambulance before. Something is wrong. Quickly, the EMTs and the cop that happened to be in the ambulance are going through and they're deciding, do we cut the mask off? Do we figure it out before everyone else? And just as they try to, Batman snaps awake. He smashes one of the EMT's faces against the cabinet in the car uh, and quickly uses them basically as a landing pad as he jumps out of the back. From there, he bolts off as fast as he can to an alley where he takes refuge and he begins calling Alfred before he passes out into a memory or a vision. When he awakes, all we see is instead of our trusty, known, familiar Alfred, we see a smoking Brit with an attitude, Constantine. From there, Bruce passes out again, only to wake up in a room he doesn't know, filled with arcane symbols and Constantine smoking, watching the TV in one room over. And that's when we see the headline, the Joker is dead, having fallen off Gotham Gate Bridge. Which was odd, because that's how Bruce had his vision. He fell from the bridge, got submerged in the water, came out, and he came back to consciousness. And the story just gets crazier from there. We quickly get to see that while he's investigating, Constantine decides to tag along to see what happened to the Joker. But more so, and it, it's extremely apparent, He's more so interested in what's happened to Batman. And as you turn more pages and read more panels, you'll discover this isn't the Gotham that we know. It's not the, you know, everybody's pals version of Gotham where Batman knows everyone and, you know, he's world famous. This is a very dark take on the world. And he barely knows anyone. He doesn't even really like Constantine, not that he ever has. But the other characters that we meet, such as Zatanna, Etrigan, uh, and even a few others that aren't really revealed until the end, they're all unknowns. They're all possible threats, and Batman treats them as such, especially given how thrown off he is by everything that's happened. And continually throughout the book, there are more and more visions or memories, we're not sure, that throw him off. And we get to see different angles of his childhood, about how Thomas and Martha Wayne weren't the ultimate perfect happy couple that were slain tragically. We get to understand how everything sort of connects in a different way in this twisted world that Brian Azzarello has crafted for us. With the way that this story is told and the new light it sheds on it, because of the darker take, because of how Martha and Thomas' relationship is, we get to understand perhaps even from before the murder, why Bruce is the way he is, how he lined up to be someone who fears guns and hates guns, how he drives for justice unendingly, unstoppingly, and how he finds that drive to survive no matter what, no matter who attacks him, if it's Bane breaking his back, Joker stabbing him and gassing him, Scarecrow you know, drugging him up, or Mad Hatter trying to take control of his mind. 
the idea of Batman always persevering is put to a crazy test in this horrific version of the characters because it feels grittier. And Lee Bermejo's art perfectly brings that to life. I do truly believe when Azrael and Bermejo teamed up, they knew they had something special because this book, as well as their previous two, show that off splendidly. So every single page of this book is rendered in such a high-detailed way that you can literally feel how grimy and disgusting Gotham is. Here's just a shot of Batman going down the alley from the fourth or fifth page. And as you can see, the level of detail in the trash, the, the brick, the, the concrete, the pavement, it's not just this stylized comic art. It, it's painted extremely realistic. It actively shows you what decades of grime and wear look like, such that you could feel it. And in Batman's suit as well, where all this damage happens, it it perfectly mimics the way you would expect materials to be damaged. Not just, you know, a, a, a hole with a patch and some blood, but it actually goes into excruciating detail. And further, just to speak about detail, the level of detail in this art is truly astounding. There isn't a single millimeter without some sort of detail packed in from the wrinkles in clothing, the, the grime on a wall, the, the dents that are in a bridge from having been built a hundred years ago to even something like idle smoke that's in a room, it's transparent. And because of the way that Bermejo has drawn this and the, the methods he's used, it's such a, a multi-dimensional art that it's almost too detailed, which is why I think if Alex Ross represents the shining, brilliant, golden age of comics, truly, Lee Bermejo represents the gritty, modern, realistic comic. And I hold them on that equal level. Because for every ounce of detail and brilliance Alex Ross puts into his work, whether it's Superman, Batman, Captain America, or someone else, Bermejo has done the same here, but using a, a darker, more gritty style. And it perfectly suits Azarello's works. So as the second and third issues extend the story, we see that the, the nightmare landscape isn't just in Bruce's head. There's something going on, something magical and something demonic in the world that's affecting Batman. And when we introduce, or rather, when we are introduced to these other characters, Zatanna and Etrigan, we get to understand how their roles differ from the, the standard continuity in this dark world. Especially when it comes to how they have to interact with their magic, how they, the tolls that are taken for using that magic... And it's extremely interesting to see Batman truly out of his element. He's not just a guy in a suit beating up criminals. He's now some guy in a costume trying to figure out how magic works. And the nightmare that takes him through this journey in these three separate parts tests what we know about Batman, what he understands about himself, but also it shows him the error of his ways, almost in a way similar to such movies such as It's a Wonderful Life where you don't know what you've got until it's gone and the extremes that these three books put Batman through really push him to that point to that breaking point to making choices he wouldn't normally make and we get by the end of it by the end of the third book we get a final character reveal which is unexpected but perfectly suited and because of the way that Azarella writes and Bermeja has drawn all these characters, it's not unexpected. It actually fits really well, and it makes sense. It's just their interpretation of this final character, it'll throw you off until you finally understand everything. And it did take me a couple of read-throughs to really get what happened and understand all the events. Because, like I said, they're not super linear. They're... They feel almost out of place sometimes. The the timeline of events, what we understand, what we see, doesn't always perfectly fit. And that just echoes how Batman feels in 
that's why I think this book is so important and so powerful. It actually makes you feel like Batman in this case. It makes you question what you know. It makes you unprepared for what comes next. And that's why Brian Azzarello and Libra Mayhill's Batman Damned is a book you absolutely must read. So please do, ladies and gentlemen, go to your local comic book store. They may still have copies of Batman Damned. Numbers one, two, and three. If not, do not worry. September 10th, the collected edition of all three books is meant to be coming out. I believe it's hardcover. Uh, and in which case you'll be able to read it then. You won't be able to see the controversial uh, depiction of Bruce's naked form uh, because they're shading it out, but don't worry, you didn't honestly miss much. So yes, please do go to your local comic book store, grab it if you can't, try something like a local bookstore where they can order it in for you or perhaps a chain of bookstores like Chapters Indigo uh, and from there you can always find it in other places but thank you for tuning in everyone again this has been Batman Damned 1, 2, and 3 as I title it A Nightmare in Three Parts by Brian Azzarello and Lee Bermejo you're going to love it have a great rest of your night